So here we're going to discuss our experiment determining orders of reaction and rate law for crystal violet decomposing with sodium hydroxide. So when we are measuring reaction rate, one of the things we do by definition is measure the change in concentration versus the change in time. This is just the definition of reaction rate. And if for us to actually determine what a rate of reaction is, it's literally just the slope of if I take a concentration versus time graph, right? So if I graph concentration versus time, the slope of that line by definition is change in concentration versus change in time. So by definition, that is equal to the rate. We also know that order of reaction is an indication as to how important the concentration is in the overall rate. So here is our reaction that we're going to be doing in lab. We have crystal violet, which is a nice pretty purple in color, and then we have hydroxide ion as our, as our reactants, and when they react they form a, a, another complex that is also colorless. So what's actually going to happen is we put these solutions together is we're going to get a nice intense purple color, and then that purple color will slowly start to fade away. Our goal in lab is to determine the overall, the, the, the full rate law for this particular reaction, the decomposition of crystal violet by hydroxide ion. So our sort of like first iteration, if you will, for our rate law is rate is equal to our rate constant, which we'll, we have to exper determine experimentally, times the crystal violet raised to, to some coefficient, times hydroxide ion raised to some coefficient. And M and N, you recall, are orders of reaction. So they're either 0 or 1 or 2, generally. So the only way we can determine what M and N are is to actually is by experiment. And so that's what we're doing in lab. Now we need to measure, normally we talk about measuring concentration to determine reaction rates. It's change in concentration versus change in time. But we are actually not going to measure it. The way we're going to sort of monitor this reaction is because this is a pretty purple color, is we're going to use our spectrometer and we're actually going to measure the absorbance of our reaction solution. So since we are measuring with absorbance, we can actually, if we know the Beer's law constants, right, so if we know the molar absorptivity of crystal violet, which we do, and we know the path length, which we do, we can run our reaction and measure absorbance versus time, but then convert it into concentration versus time. So we're going to calculate our change in concentration by, by measuring the absorbance. So our, there are two methods for determining orders of reaction. We're actually going to use both in this experiment. And you need to try to keep them separate because they're very, very different in terms of their method. So what we're going to do to determine the order of reaction in the hydroxide ion is we are going to use the method of initial rates. So the method of initial rates, you call from lecture, is we run the reaction under a certain set of conditions. So we're going to run the reaction under a certain, with, we're going to keep our concentration of crystal violet the same. Then we're going to run the reaction with a hydroxide ion on the order of 0.05 molar. We're going to run that reaction and we're going to say, okay, what is the rate of this reaction? So the way we're going to measure the rate of reaction is actually going to monitor our change in concentration of crystal violet over time. Because remember, crystal violet is sort of purple in color, and we can sort of like monitor the absorbance per unit time, and then graph change in concentration versus change in time, and that by definition is our rate of reaction. So we run a reaction. We, and we're only going to run it, and we have to just run it for like about 30 seconds because this is the method of initial rates. We need to know what is the rate of reaction like right there at the beginning when we start this entire system. So we run the reaction, again, is 0.05 molar, see how fast it goes. The way we're going to figure out how fast it goes is take the slope of the concentration versus time graph. Again, by definition, that's what reaction rate is. How fast did the reaction go under these sets of conditions? And then we run the reaction again where we double the concentration of hydroxide ion, but the leave, we leave the crystal violet concentration the same. So if I double the concentration of hydroxide ion, crystal violet stays constant, and the rate does not change, right? So run two rate is equal to run one rate. That means that the reaction is zeroth order in hydroxide ion because doubling the concentration didn't change the reaction rate. If I double the concentration of hydroxide ion and the reaction rate goes up by a factor of two, that means that N, in this case, the order of reaction would be first order. And if we observe that the run two rate is four times that of run one, then we know that, in fact, it is second order. So these are one, one of these three things we should see. 
we should either see when we double the concentration of hydroxide, either the rate stays the same, or it doubles, or goes up by a factor of two, meaning that it's zeroth order, or first order, or second order. One of these three should happen. So that's the method of initial rates. Now, the way we're going to get our order of reaction for a crystal violet, we're going to use the other method, which is the graphical method. The method of initial rates was doing two runs very, very quickly, right? So two short runs. The method, the graphical method is doing one run, but doing it for a very long time. So we're going to do a separate run where in the method of initial rates, we did it for about 30 seconds. For this, we're going to run it for about six minutes where we're going to set up a reaction and we're going to let the, let the solution run for a while and then monitor that change in concentration of the crystal violet over time. Right? Now, yes, this is sort of like, this is sort of reaction rate, but we're not looking at reaction rate per se. We're letting the concentration change to see what the order of reaction is in crystal violet. So, you will call from lecture that the, if it's a zeroth order reaction, that means that the reaction rate is not concentration dependent. So a graph of concentration versus time would be a straight line, right? So if we graph concentration versus time for a long period, we, again, we have to do this for six minutes. If we graph concentration of crystal violet versus time and we get a straight line, that tells us that the reaction is zeroth order. The rate is constant. doesn't matter how much crystal violet we have. If, however, we graph the ln of concentration versus time, that is a straight line if and only if the reaction is first order in crystal violet. If it's second order in crystal violet, then a graph of 1 over concentration will be linear. So recall that our orders of reaction, so we're looking for m here, so m is either going to be 0, 1, or 2. We're trying to figure out which one is it. Is it 0, is it 1, or is it 2? So we're going to make these three graphs. We're going to graph concentration versus time, we're going to graph the ln of concentration versus time, and we're going to graph 1 over concentration versus time. And one of those graphs right? So, sorry, there's a little typo there. So we make three graphs, concentration versus time, element of concentration versus time, one over concentration front. And whichever one of those gives us the straightest line tells us what the order of reaction is in crystal violet. So just like in crystal, in the hydroxide ion, only one of these three should be nice and straight, right? If, a, if, if this one is straight, then it's zeroth order. If this one is straightest, if you will, most linear, it's first order. And if this one is most linear, then it's second order. So the way we are going to determine which one is straightest, if you will, or the, the straight line giving us the order, is we're going to look at the, that correlation value uh, of our linear plots. right? So I think the code for in your spreadsheet is going to be the C-O-R-R-E-L, known as the correlation. That, remember, is just sort of like the value for, that, that tells you how close is the, the data to a linear fit. So we'll graph those three. We'll, we'll look at the graphs and we'll determine the R squared values of those linear plots and whichever one is closest to the value of one tells us which one is most linear and then we can draw the conclusion as to what the order of reaction is in crystal violet. Now the last thing we're going to need to do is determine the value of K and so once we know, so we're going to know our value of hydroxide ion, we're going to know the order of reaction after we do the initial rights, we're going to know the order of reaction for the crystal violet and then we're going to need sort of our, then, if you recall from lecture, the next thing we need to do is calculate our value of K. So all we need is one run of data, a run of data, where we know what the reaction rate is, and we know the concentration of crystal violet, we know the order, we know the concentration of hydroxide ion, we know the order, and we can solve for K. So we're going to actually use those short run datas from the hydroxide ion run because those are the ones we actually calculated rate. We, we ran it for just 30 seconds and determined the initial rate. So we're going to use that data for calculating our value of K. Good luck.